Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to talk about landscaping for curb appeal, and we'd like to thank magrag.us for a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. This is a veteran-owned company that makes heavy-duty shop racks. Cool. And we're also close to publishing our 14th ebook, and, and we'll let you know when you get a free copy on Amazon. One of the first U.S. commercial nurseries to sell plants to homeowners was in Flushing, New York in 1737. One of the first hardware stores to sell plant seeds was Thorburn & Sons Seed and Florist Shop in 1802, and one of the first books on landscape design was Downing's A Treatise on the Theory and Practice of Landscape Gardening in 1841. Hmm. Webster's Dictionary says curb appeal is the visual attractiveness of your house as seen from the street. And for decades, if you were shopping for a home, you'd drive by a house to get a feel for what it looks like before you made an appointment to look inside. And now most people view pictures of the exterior online. Mm -hmm. So a great way to get a fresh look of your home's landscaping is to take a picture of your home on the street from both sides and one in front. And that way you can study how the landscape plants, the lawn, and the edging look. Virginia State University said a study on property sales found well-landscaped homes with a nice lawn sold for 5 to 12% more than similar homes without updated landscaping. Hmm. A joint study by the University of Alabama and the University of Texas found that between similar homes, homes where the buyers said they had better curb appeal, those homes sold for about 14% more. Wow. The ancient Romans developed the first curbs to control street traffic, they use curbs to separate the street from walkways for pedestrians. Cool. Yeah. The University of Missouri says studies show good landscaping in the front yard not only can increase a property's value, but it can increase the pride of ownership. In the early 1900s, bushes were used against the front of the house to cover up high foundations, and that became popular with wealthy homeowners. After World War I, many landscape books and newspaper articles encouraged new homeowners to plant landscape plants around their homes to make the country more beautiful. Nice. And most homeowners copied that idea of planting bushes against their home in the front yard, but with no regard to how tall or how wide they would eventually grow. <laughs> Oops. And that still continues. <laughs> The University of Missouri says today's landscaping around the foundation and front yard should be unified, balanced, complement your home, and fit in with the neighborhood. The front of your home and the landscaping should look balanced. The two main types of landscape designs are symmetrical and asymmetrical. A symmetrical landscape design is created by planting and arranging all the elements of your landscape in a mirror image. And this looks good with traditional styled homes or a home with a uniform design. For example, the front door is in the middle of the house with the same amount and the placement of windows on each side of the house. Right. Asymmetrical designs generally look more casual, informal, or modern. Asymmetrical balance relies more on the visual feel of a balanced scale. So if you can imagine putting one tree and a shrub on one side of your house and then four or five smaller shrubs or plants on the other side and thinking about the weight of each on a scale and you want those to balance. Mm. A lot of the articles I read on asymmetrical design talked about the visual weight. So when you're laying out your design, plan for the mature height and the width of all of your plants. I appreciated all your hand motions in that. <laughs> Symmetrical designs are a lot easier to plan and where, execute. Right, where asymmetrical designs rely on this visual impact that the plants have. And if it doesn't feel or look balanced, it isn't visually appealing. Right. 
Plant color and how full or dense the plant stems and leaves are also impact the visual weight. Dark colors have more visual weight. Thicker, denser plants look heavier. Hmm. Asymmetrical designs give you more creativity to blend different types of plants, colors, and textures to get a balanced look, but it definitely takes more planning and research. You're going to be planting these small, young plants, but you need to know how big they're going to be when they're mature, right? like how wide, how tall, so it might look stupid for a while <laughs> when you first plant it, right? No, I think well-spaced small plants are going to look better than overgrown plants. And you've probably put in new mulch and organized the landscape edging, so it's going to look fantastic. To each his own. (laughs) The University of Missouri says good landscaping can help your home and your yard look unified. And a simple design is to frame your home by planting the largest trees or shrubs on both sides of your home and then have progressively smaller plants towards the front door. Hmm. If you have large plants by the front door, it can make the entrance feel cramped or confined, and many professionals feel it's less attractive. And it's scary. There could be birds hiding (laughs) right by your front door. Because your front door should be the focal point. Most professionals are saying you shouldn't have overgrown plants that are blocking the front door. Yeah, the look of the front door. They also recommend extending the landscape areas past the house on both sides and extending your landscape bed further into the lawn, and that helps connect the house, the lawn, and your landscape plants. And you have less grass to mow. And less to fertilize, and less to water. The National Garden Bureau suggests using your home style to guide your landscape design. A colonial or formal home may look better with symmetrical landscaping, A cottage-style home may look better with asymmetrical landscaping using more flowers and flower pots with annuals as Mm. accents. They say take a look at your home in winter to see the balance of trees and shrubs and the visual appeal of pathways, fences, raised beds, and hardscapes. They say should you take more pictures? Yes, take from both sides and in front. (laughs) They say the landscape should be interesting and balanced in all seasons. All righty. Consider the proportions of your home size, the landscape area, and yard size to match the size and amount of plants so it looks complementary. Mm-hmm. To add more color and interest in spring, summer, and fall, they say add flowering bulbs like Darwin hybrid tulips and trumpet daffodils so you get flowers in spring, and then perennials like hostas and daylilies for flowers in summer, once those spring flowers stop blooming. Right. And then add flowering plants and shrubs that flower in fall, and that way you're going to have continuous color and interest all year. Seems like a lot of work, though. (laughs) Use the accent colors or complementary colors from your home and your landscape to tie it all together. If you have burgundy shutters or a front door, for example, plant a Japanese maple with burgundy leaves or plants with burgundy leaves. Hmm. You can use flower pots with complementary colors to add visual interest and coordinate your landscape and home. Also, you have to do some research, like on colors of flowers and leaves. And get a color wheel. (laughs) Use mulch to make your landscape look finished, and mulch is going to help retain moisture, regulate soil temperature, reduce weeds, and add organic matter into the soil for healthier soil. Mm -hmm. The University of Florida says the average home should have a simple landscape design. Too much variety can look cluttered and unorganized, Reducing your landscape design to the simplest functional form is more pleasing than too much, plus it's less expensive and easier to maintain. Mm -hmm. As a general rule, the height of your plants around your home shouldn't exceed two-thirds of the height of the wall. Keep plants under windows lower than the windowsills. For a raised porch, keep plants below the porch decking height. For the front entryway, you want low-growing, compact plants that will retain their form without sprawling. Sprawling? Sprawling? Yes, spreading out too much. This is a university speaking. (laughs) They use cool words. A landscape design that provides a direct view of the front door increases visual appeal and is going to help with orientation. Okay. A couple ideas from the University of Florida to set up the core of your landscape design. 
Use a small grouping of evergreen bushes that will be close to the house when they're full grown, but not touching the house, and space them so when they're full grown, they're not touching each other. Mm. That way you're going to have better airflow and sunlight between the bushes. Stagger and plant flowers or plants with different textures or shapes in front of the bushes. And these plants should be smaller in height to the bushes when they're full grown. Mm. Use taller plants or trees at the corners of your home. Taller, narrow evergreens can be used in between windows if they stay in that space between the windows. Interesting. Use plants that grow to the height you want when they're fully grown. It's going to create a more natural look rather than a manicured look. Plus, it's a lot less work. (laughs) The International Society of Arboriculture says plant trees far enough away from your home to prevent damage. As a general rule, tree roots extend two to three times past the drip line, or about one and a half times the tree's height. So why don't you explain what drip line is? The drip line is the width of the tree branches where the leaves end. That's right. Where, yeah, that's well, it. I know, but you should still explain <laughs> it to our listeners. And you should know where your main drain pipe is for your home. You want to plant most trees at least 10 feet away from your main sewer drain pipe. Compare the root growth for the trees you're looking at because you want to know how far to plant these from sidewalks, your main sewer drain, and your house. Right. I spoke to Nature Hills. They're an online nursery. Their horticulturist had some suggestions for landscape trees or large shrubs to improve curb appeal. They say if you're in the north, look at panicle hydrangeas. They have a limelight hydrangea that grows well in zones 3 to 9, so basically everywhere in the U.S. except for the far south. This is a flowering shrub that grows 6 to 8 feet tall and 6 to 8 feet wide, Hmm. and it can be used as a single accent plant, or you can plant a few of them next to each other and create a screening hedge. Okie dokie. For the eastern part of the U.S., the eastern redbud is a tree that grows 20 to 30 feet tall, and the branches spread 15 to 30 feet wide. In spring, it has purple flowers. For southern states, magnolias are a good accent plant. Nature Hills has a Leonard Messel magnolia with a height of 15 to 20 feet, Uh a width of 12 to 18 feet, and this has purple flowers. This tree won the Royal Horticultural Society Award of Garden Merit. This is an award that dates back to 1922, and it's given to plants of outstanding excellence for garden decoration or use. I'm sure they're very pleased. (laughs) So plants with this award, they don't require specialized growing conditions or care and aren't particularly susceptible to any pest or disease. Oh, that's cool. For western states, they recommend the crepe myrtle. They have a Sioux crepe myrtle. So you're not going to spell that. So (laughs) So you just said all those words together. Sioux. S-I-O-U-X, capital mm-hmm. C-R-A-P-E, capital M-Y-R-T-L-E. So the Sioux Crepe Myrtle grows 12 to 15 feet tall. It's 8 to 10 feet wide, and it has pink flowers. Mm-hmm. It can be trimmed up 3 to 5 feet off the ground so it looks like a tree, or you can leave it untrimmed, and it looks more like a bush if you Ooh, want to use it to hide, to hide things. Yeah, Or you can use it like a screen for privacy. Right. You can check out Nature Hills at naturehills.com. It's N-A-T-U-R-E-H-I-L-L-S dot com. When I was talking to Nature Hills, they mentioned using arborist wood chips as a landscape mulch. What's that? Tree removal companies and cities that remove trees and bushes run all the parts of the tree or the bush through a tree shredder, and it creates this mulch. Mm -hmm. And some towns or companies give this away for free. Cool. The University of Vermont says studies have found arborist wood chips are a good mulch for landscape areas with trees and shrubs, but not the best for vegetable gardens or flower beds. Mm. And if you use wood chips... It helps the landscape area retain moisture, control soil temperature and weeds, but keep it at least three inches away from a tree trunk or a shrub's bark. Okay. 
If you've moved into a home with overgrown shrubs or you've just let your shrubs get too big, Iowa State University suggests trimming down overgrown deciduous shrubs over a period of three years, hmm. removing up to a third of the bush the first year in early spring, and they say start with the old stems at ground level, repeat this each spring, and trim any new growth. Overgrown evergreen shrubs are more difficult to trim back aggressively. Many types, like junipers, have dead zones in the center, and they won't grow new leaves from the bare branches. Huh. They're saying with large overgrown evergreen shrubs, you may need to remove them and then replant with bushes that are going to grow to the height you want without trimming. So look at the mature height. Right. Some top-rated pruners come from Corona, C-O-R-O-N-A, Fiskars, F-I-S-K-A-R-S, and Felco, F-E-L-C-O. Some top-rated hedge trimmers come from Ryobi, R-Y-O-B-I, Milwaukee, M-I-L-W-A-U-K-E-E, -E, DeWalt, D-E, capital W-A-L-T, Works, W-O-R-X, and Black & Decker. So I just thought my parents' landscaping ideas at their house were crazy growing up. Okay. But now, like, after listening to this episode and learning yep. what you should do, it's super crazy what they had. <laughs> so they have a ranch-style house. They had one car garage attached. And then they had a picture window, the front door, and then two windows at the end of the house for okay. one of the bedrooms. Below the picture window, they had a flower bed where my mom used to plant impatiens. And when I say my mom, my, me and my sister did that. <laughs> so we'd plant all these impatiens and then they would, you know, bloom okay. during the summer. Probably look cool. Right. However, then there was a sidewalk going leading to the front door from the driveway. But in front of the sidewalk, they had these hedges. So that were like four feet high. Okay. So nobody saw the stupid flowers that we planted <laughs> unless you were walking up to the front door. So that was a lot of work. And then, you know, my mom would let the hedges get pretty high and the right. long branches sticking out and looked crazy. So then she would trim them. And then in front of the bedroom windows, they had two evergreen bushes. Okay. But they grew together. So it looked like one big bush. Right. But then the evergreen bushes would be huge and look crazy. So, yeah. I mean, what a crazy landscape area that my parents had until finally they got sick of it and they ripped everything out. And that's when they put down the landscaping stones, the okay. white marble stones. Right. No more planting for us. So that was cool. So but no plants in there. No, we went from, you know, huge, you know, bushes to nothing. That's great. So simple. <laughs> Do you have anything else to add? To improve the curb appeal of your landscape plants, keep the design simple Purchase plants with a mature height and width in mind. That's going to help keep trimming to a minimum. Mm -hmm. Get drought-resistant and insect-resistant plants. And think about the visual balance of your plants to frame your home. And if you're in a hot climate, rather than bushes or shrubs, you can be using different types of cactus. Cacti? Yes. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our eBooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, Books 1 through 13, and soon Book 14 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please give us a five-star rating and review. You can follow Cindy on Twitter, at Fixit Co-host. You can follow us on Instagram, Fixit Home Improvement. And you can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Deep, 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 deep,